Hello everybody, Mr. Grimes here bringing you a video. Uh, this time the video is going to be on uh, knowing when to, um, sorry let me get adjusted here, I didn't adjust beforehand. Uh, knowing when to flip the inequality symbol or sign. Okay, when we talk about flipping, okay, we're talking about flipping a greater than, turning it into a less than. Okay, or if it was in greater than or equal to, turning it into a less than or equal to. So it's either going to flip from a less than to greater or greater to less. Okay, so how do we know when to do this? Okay, well let's first explore why in the world we would need to flip it in the first place. So from the last video, we know that in order to solve this uh, inequality, okay, whatever we're being told to do here, we always wind up doing the opposite. So we've got negative 4 and we're multiplying x because there's nothing between negative 4 and x. We always think that that's multiplying, okay? So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So to uh, get rid of this negative 4, we're going to have to divide by a negative 4. What we do on the left, we do on the right. Negative 4 divided by negative 4, we would just say those two cancel out and I always call that the big 1 leaving us with only x behind. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. And in all the other cases that we've done with these inequalities, we have always just pulled this inequality symbol down, or the equal sign down. Okay. So when we look at the answer on this, okay, and let me go ahead and caution you right now, we have an incorrect answer here right now. And, and we're fixing to find out why. If we were to graph this, we would say it's a closed dot. And since the variable is on the left, the inequality points, and it's pointing to the right. So answers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are all acceptable answers according to our problem. So let's check it. Okay. I will also caution you to not plug in negative 3 because you're going to wind up getting uh, false positives every now and again. Always go with whatever this top symbol is. Don't go with the equal to. Okay? So pick a number that is greater than, bigger than negative 3 and the easy number I see here is 0. So let's plug that into our original equation and see what happens. Okay? So negative 4x is greater than or equal to 12. So let's plug in 0 into that. Is negative 4 times 0 bigger than 12? Well, negative 4 times 0 is 0. Is 0 bigger than 12? No, it's not. Something happened. The math we did was correct to undo multiplication we divided. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. We can check that on a calculator very easily. Okay, So nothing we did here was incorrect. So what's wrong with the problem? The only thing that can happen to change this would be the symbol. Okay, So let's check that out. Okay, So if none of the answers to the right are going to work, let's just assume that the answers to the left will. So let's try on things like negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, so on and so forth. Let's, uh, let's do negative 4 since that's the next value down, next integer value down. Okay, so now let's try uh, negative 4. So here we go, negative 4, x is greater than or equal to 12. Is negative 4 times negative 4 greater than or equal to negative 12? Negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 4 is 16. Is 16 greater than or equal to 12? Yes, that works. Okay, so how are we going to fix our answer? Okay, we just checked and all the answers to the right look like they're not going to work because we tested 0 and it did not work. So therefore we tested a number to the left and it did work. So what can we do to change our answer here to fit this? Okay, well 
since we tried negative 4, then that means that the arrow should go to the left and not the right. Okay, so let's change that. So instead of the arrow going to the right, it's going to go to the left. Okay, now how do we change it here? Well, remember when the variable is on the left, the inequality points. And so this inequality is actually pointing which way in the fixed version? That's correct. It flips and goes in the other direction. Okay. Now, here's the thing. You can always work out a problem and then check it. And if your answer is incorrect, check the other side of the dot. You can do that. But we're all about coming up with rules and deriving things and, and coming up with shorter ways of doing something than having to check and make sure that we got this correct. So here is the thing that uh, we've come up with in this class. And uh, it's going to be kind of a two-question thing. So your, your first thought is, do I need to flip the inequality? Yes or no, they are the only two answers, OK? So we're looking for a yes or a no. And we're going to get our yes or no by asking this question. Is the number attached to the variable negative? If the answer is yes, then yes, we need to flip. If the answer is no, then no, we do not need to flip. So let's see how this works. Let's solve that one. 2 is multiplying x, so we would undo it by dividing. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That's where we get the big old 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Do we need to flip? Okay, so here we go. Do I need to flip? Yes or no? Well, is the number attached to the variable negative? Here's the number attached to the variable. It was originally a positive. So no, it's not negative. So no, we do not need to flip. We can check answers real quick, like something bigger than 3 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 is bigger than 6. It checks out, OK? All right, so now let's try another one. Um, negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 9. OK, so here we're, we're taking negative 3 and multiplying by x, so we have to undo it by dividing. So dividing both sides by negative 3, negative divided by negative is a positive. 3 divided by 3 is a 1, big old 1. Negative 9 divided by negative 3, negative divided by negative is positive. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Do I need to flip, yes or no? Well, is the number attached to the variable negative? So looking here at the x, the number that was attached to the variable is a negative 3. So is the, uh, the number attached to the variable negative? Yes, it is. Yes, we need to flip. So let's flip this around. So instead of being less than, it's going to be greater than. Let's do a quick check. Okay, It says that the number has to be greater than 3, so we can try 4. What happens when we plug in 4 here? Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, and negative 12 is smaller than negative 9. So this works. OK, let's do one more example just to push this out here, OK? Because this is going to be an example that's going to be a hang up for everybody. And that's what happens if we have something like this. Ooh. OK, negative x is greater than 4. How do we even solve this problem? OK. Well, when there's not a number out in the front there, if we say that there are negative x here, we're, we're actually saying there are negative 1 amounts of x's. So there technically is a number there, and the number is 1. Okay. 
It wouldn't be zero because if it was zero, we wouldn't have anything here at all, not even an x. So it has to be one. So we got negative one that's multiplying x. We divide by negative one. Negative one divided by negative one. That's going to be a positive one, big old one there. Four divided by negative one here is negative four. And now the question is, do I need to flip? Well, is the number attached to the variable negative? If we're looking at the original problem, you would say there is no number attached to the variable. Okay, That's why we attach this one here so that this can still stand true. So now that we change this from a negative x to a negative 1x, okay, is the number attached to the variable negative? Yes, it is. So we need to flip. We can check our answers here. Okay. Now, on this one, it's going to be a little bit different because it does say that. But let's let's just take a look at it. Okay. Uh, negative x is greater than four. Okay. So the answers to this would be let's say zero and then a negative four here. This would be an open dot, and we're pointing to the left. So answers like negative five, negative six would be it. So let's try, let's try negative five. So here's where it gets weird. You've got negative x. So negative, and in place of x, we're going to put in a negative five. A negative negative five. Okay. Well, remember <clears throat> this a double negative here. It's kind of like if we had something minus a negative 5, we would have to keep change, change, right? So this is technically a positive 5, folks. Is 5 bigger than 4? Yes, it is. So this worked. Okay. I hope this video was informative for you. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, until next time, uh, we'll talk to you later.